As my spring road trip comes to an end, I take the time to reflect on the journey's highlights. Big tree, big hug. What goes up must come down. So the most important rule when I'm traveling is to make sure I get there safely. But my trailer frame may be breaking in half right now. I always listen, make sure there's nothing odd that sounds funny with the engine or a rumble. And if there is anything I'm concerned with, I pull over and check. However, shortly after making that statement, something else did happen. Well, they say bad luck comes in threes. Flat tire. Well, I've got it in neutral and I've got blocks on the other side, but I don't know where the hole is. It was hissing when it was down, but once I jacked it up, it stopped. So what I'm going to have to do, well, there's something there, but I don't hear a noise. I'm going to see if I got some detergent in the trailer some water, see if I can get some bubbles. Dr. Bonners. It should be sudsy enough. There we go. Okay. Let's see what we got. Well, I've covered it with detergent. But I'm still not seeing any bubbles. I wonder if it's on the side. Well, I'll hook up the pump. See what happens when I fill it up again. That's when a whale of a hole started to spout. Well, I found where the hole is. It's right there. I just put an awl in there so uh, I know where it is. As soon as it dries, I won't find it. Right dead center in the tire, there's a hole there. And I have my kit, my repair kit. It's the same one I used in the Yukon um, about two years ago, maybe three years ago now. And uh, the needle tool, I just need to thread the needle with the patch, whatever you want to call it, the rope, I guess. It's a little gooey, but it's still pliable. Okay, here we go. This does not always work as planned, but at least I have lots of this patching rope so if it doesn't work the first time I'll have a second chance. Okay, you can hear that hiss a little bit. Get that in. And I'm supposed to put it about two-thirds of the way but I don't know what two-thirds is so okay and then pull up quickly. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Okay, let me just improvise here. Mm. 
Okay. Well, it didn't take. I can still hear it hissing. Right there, see? Stopped. But it's still going. Got to try it a second time. Actually, maybe what I'll do this time is I'll try to ream it out a little first. See if that does it a little better. Okay, definitely a hole there now. Uh, I think I got it that time. But I believe what I have to do now is plug that in as, as much as I can get it, which I did, and cut off the excess. Like that. I'm just going to put a little bit more in. Well, it's not making a noise, so that's a good sign. With the leak plugged, I now brought the air pressure up to 35 PSI, just enough to safely drive on the roads. Well, there's no more hiss. I think I got it. Time to let her down. I'm letting air out in the other one so they're about the same pressure, 35 PSI. I want them to be balanced. Hopefully that'll do it. On the road again, fingers crossed. I guess there's a little bit of irony in my last conversation because about an hour and a half later the uh, the Jeep just started wobbling a little bit flat tire light went on just while I was at a pull off and sure enough flat tire so you know that's three things that have happened to me in a short time I'm hoping bad luck only is in threes not a fourth time, and it happens to be the hottest day of the year. It is 32 Celsius right now. It's hot, it's super hot. And uh, when I was in Maryland and I put the air conditioning on, my engine overheated, so I'm just sweating it out. I'm not putting my air conditioning on, I'm just using the fan. Hopefully I can get where I wanna go today and no more problems. And fortunately for me, whenever it's hot, I have a knack of finding places that are cold and wet. Eventually, I made it to a remote wildlife preserve that had all the signs of a good campsite. The first sign was to keep it clean. Next were practical and simple rules for camping, and my favorite, no chainsaws or generators allowed. This was a quiet area. If only the blue jays and robins could read.
Well, it's been a week since I patched this tire. Let's just see how it's doing because I've gone about 600 miles, which is about a thousand kilometers. So if it was gonna leak, it would uh, probably show me by now. So let's just tighten that on. And it says 35 PSI. So there hasn't been a leak out of this at all. Um, I don't have to do anything else. However, let me just sort of tell you that I did go to a garage on my travels just to get it checked and they were okay with the plug that I did. Um, they, they found a little, like a, like a tiny little bubble in another place. I had them patch up, but when you do your own repair, do take it to a garage afterwards just to make sure it was okay or have it done or redone professionally. So what do you need to get out of this? First of all, anybody can repair a tire and always have a tire repair kit. Um, and when I say anybody, there's no excuses. Man, woman, young, old, anybody can repair a tire and you should know how to. That's the important thing. But if it couldn't be repaired, you also have to know how to change a tire. You gotta know where your spare is. You've gotta know how to remove it. You've gotta make sure you've got the jacks and all the equipment you need to change it. No excuses. If you can't do it, you at least have to have that stuff on hand so when a passerby helps you, you got all the stuff for them and you know they're doing the right thing. So, no excuse. Tires, they're real important. Now I'm gonna put this back on again because uh, I had it for 35, but for me, hauling the trailer, I'm gonna bring it up to 45. Well, okay, maybe air pumps aren't allowed here either, but I only used it for five minutes. Then it went back to peace and quiet. While the robin cooled off with a bath, a brood of ducklings swam by. It was a group of ten, and they definitely were on a mission. But what happened to Mum? Suddenly, there was a frenzy. Did they see a predator? Nope, it was just their mother. All was well. Well, it was promising when I got here, but now it seems the clouds of doom have arrived. So got the awning down, getting set for perhaps some nasty weather. I'm in Maine, very close to the Quebec border. And uh, it's a beautiful little place. It's a reserve. Um, it's a free camping place, but in respect to the locals, because this is a local fishing hole, I'm not gonna give you a lot of information. However, if you're near the town of Stratton and you do your research, you might find something similar to this at least. Now, <coughs> oh, <coughs> oh, 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 <laughs> I almost broke my rules of vegetarianism. <coughs> There's a mosquito I just <laughs> swallowed, but I got it back up again. Oh, oh, oh. better keep my much mouth shut for now on. <coughs> Okay, let's try that again. Before I ate that mosquito, I was just going to say this is my last night in a campsite before I return home. So I'm just gonna relax, chill out, enjoy the wilderness, and not inhale any more mosquitoes. But it looks like it's starting to rain now, so I got a feeling I'm gonna hang out under the awning.
Well, now that it's raining, the mosquitoes are even worse because they have the awning to shelter them to attack me. So it's nice and cool out here, but I'm sick of these bugs. My last cooked meal was broccoli and cauliflower over fried noodles. After an orange sun set the lake on fire, I called it a night. Now after lugging this kayak around for thousands of miles on this trip, was it worth it? Absolutely. While listening to the paddles as they make ripples on the calm waters, I realize how lucky we are to still have places where you can experience the songs and sights of nature. I truly hope my viewers will also see the joy this world offers, and despite the turmoil all around us, there is also a paradise waiting to be found. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my others as well.